Hi, everyone. Good evening. Nice to see, hi, <laughs> all of your, I assume, smiling faces under the mask. So my name is Mira Silvera. I use she, her pronouns. I am a rising, nope, not rising senior. I'm a senior in Gallatin studying prison reform and social public policy. And this summer I had the privilege of working with the Pratt Center for Community Development. So what is the Pratt Center? I originally was interested in working with Pratt because they were looking, they were working on a project in my neighborhood. Last year I lived in Alphabet City on Avenue D, close to the East River Park. I was interested in this fellowship program originally because I am studying prison reform and public policy and was interested in how urban practice shapes society and how policy can fit into this larger world of either changing or reinforcing current structures. And this is the mission that Pratt works to solve every day around New York City. So their mission is working for a more just, equitable, and sustainable New York. They occupy this really interesting space between community organizing work and city governments, working to bring concerns bottom up and policy suggestions and implementation top down. And they kind of sit in the middle facilitating urban planning, working with community engagement, doing research and education in the fields of land use, housing justice, transit access, energy and sustainability, and employment opportunity among many other things. So this summer I worked on three projects. One of them I spent about a week on doing a little bit of research for an update to a hotel zoning uh, research report in New York City, which was called Still Room for Improvement, looking at the disparity between hotels currently in use for homeless shelters over this past year while COVID was very intense in New York City. And now the issue with um, lacking investment in uh, building affordable housing in lieu of building more hotels. And then the two main projects that I spent most of my time with were the Hunts Point Forward Vision Plan and the East Side Coastal Resiliency Project. So the majority of my time was spent working on the Hunts Point Forward Project, which is an update to a 2004 vision plan, which set guidelines and was an investment directive um, gathering uh, gathering suggestions from hundreds of Bronx stakeholders about where investments were needed in their communities. So if you don't know, Hunts Point is this tiny little peninsula in the South Bronx, which is a very unique neighborhood and I think really encapsulates the phrase small but mighty. This peninsula is 1.7 square miles, which is mixed residential and industrial use, and it is home to one of the largest food distribution centers in the entire world which feeds over 60% of New York City. So any produce, meat or fish or other food that you have is coming through this market and it accounts for almost 10% of the entire nation's food. The neighborhood is small and is also a very tight knit community with families who have been in this neighborhood for generations. So the main work that I was doing to support Pratt Center was working on a survey where we collected hundreds of responses from folks who lived in the area or worked in the area through community outreach and attending events. The survey was asking what could make quality of life in the area better, looking at issues such as truck traffic because of the large influx from the food distribution center going in and going out. With the tra truck traffic comes lots of asthma issues, street safety, there's limited transit access in the neighborhood for getting to and moving about the peninsula and respondents also spoke a lot about general safety issues, cleanliness with their streets, and wanting more programming and education for their seniors and their youth. One of the ways that Pratt facilitates their work is through community engagement and attending events that already happen. So my favorite one that I got to go to and the first in-person event I had attended in a long time was the 2021 Fish Parade which if you're familiar with the Fulton Fish Market, it was relocated to the Hunts Point Food Distribution Center in 2005, and aptly they have this fish, fish parade named after it. So Pratt does a lot of their work attendi um, attending and facilitating workshops for youth, 
We went to open houses and spoke with parents and workers to get a large range of respondents for this survey, asking what they want to see better in their community. The Fish Parade was a march around the neighborhood and we got to see performances from local artists. I took these photos of the Bombasa dance group and their drummer accompaniment. Um, there was also boat tours with one of the community organizations that we worked with as it sits on the peninsula. And we got to see performances from local artists. There was a lot of food. And we learned about the Afro-Puerto Rican style of dance called bomba, which is pictured here. The other project that I spent the majority of my summer working on was the Eastside Coastal Resiliency Project. So Pratt Center for Community Development was facilitating their community advisory group, which gathered East Village and Lower East Side stakeholders and residents to bring up concerns with the reconstruction project happening on the East Side Park. So the East River Park is getting a update over many years with the primary goal of installing an eight foot seawall to protect the Stytown, East Village, and Lower East Side neighborhoods from flooding damage, which might happen during the next hurricane or inevitable natural disaster. So these neighborhoods were hit particularly hard during Superstorm Sandy, and there was a lot of loss in the area, and a lot of people were cut off from resources. So this, the city came up with this plan to protect the future residents. It was really interesting living in the neighborhood in the East Village while I was also working on this project because I saw firsthand the issue with how the project was being framed to community residents and also the actual intention of the project, which was to preserve and protect the neighborhood for future generations. Um, the community had, uh, their slogan was Save East River Park, and this was their campaign working to raise awareness about what was going on. I um, attached this photo, which I saw on my corner, and I, these flyers started popping up the last month that I lived there of the squirrels, which was a reoccurring theme at the community advisory group meetings was what happens to the squirrels while the park is being demolished and the trees are getting removed, which may seem a little bit silly, but I thought it was quite touching that residents who were not at all involved with animal welfare or any type of these organizations were so concerned about the animal populations living in their neighborhood. I learned a lot about how the community was working to get their questions answered through this project and the, I guess, promotional campaigns which were showing it as closing the park and taking away green space even though this was not the intention and how Pratt was able to facilitate a, a rebrand, if you will, to get the true message conveyed to residents. I do not know what button I press, but that is not the next slide. There we go. <laughs> so my biggest takeaways from this summer was learning about how communities work to be involved in the own progress that goes on in their backyard and working to hold their representatives accountable for change that they want to see or change that they don't want to see happening. I got to see how tricky it is translating community needs and wants into actionable policy items. And my biggest takeaways was learning how community members know exactly what and how they want the things done that they want done, whether it's basic needs such as more trash cans or regular trash pickups in their community, all the way up to redesigning and overhauling how public safety is handled after large events happen in their community. It was really, really wonderful experience learning how Pratt managed all of this and was able to keep all of their all of their projects afloat while working to balance both communities and also the bureaucratic structures that they were working with. Thank you so much. I would like to thank Connor and John Paolo and Sam and my supervisors at Pratt, Tara and Paula, my faculty mentor, Mehmet, of course and especially all of my other fellows and Sam for creating such a wonderful learning environment.